Portland, Oregon, where the Blazers' motto is Rise With Us. A week ago, the Portland Trail Blazers had the playoff matchup they wanted, the Dallas Mavericks, now trailing 0-2 in the series. The Blazers return home, probably in need of two wins in the next 42 hours to have a chance to stay alive in this first round of playoff matchup. Hi everyone, I'm Matt Devon alongside Kevin McHale. We'll be joined by Marty Snyder this evening. Kevin, what do the Portland Trailblazers need to do to come away with a win tonight? Well, score over 90 points for one thing. They've been in the 80s for two games. How to score more? They've got to get up and put some pressure on the Mavericks, turn them over, get out in the break, keep running. They've got to get some production from their bench. Their bench has really been outscored big by the Dallas bench. And keep punching it into Lamarcus Aldridge. All right, time now for the starting lineups. Dirk Nowitzki has been outstanding in the first two games of this series, but take a look inside that matchup between Tyson Chandler and LaMarcus Aldridge. This is the series right here. I think this is the best matchup in the series. Can Tyson Chandler handle LaMarcus Aldridge one-on-one? -on -one? If they don't double-team LaMarcus Aldridge, it's really hard for those other guys to get off. And so far, Coach Carlisle's been very, very happy with um, Tyson Chandler's defense. All right, Kevin, let's send it over to Marty Snyder. Marty? We talked to the Mavs players today, Matt, and they all say the same thing. We must start with the same sense of urgency we finished game two with. I talked to Tyson Chandler. He said, you know what, we're an old team. It takes us a while to get going. But Rick Carlisle said, you cannot play from behind too often. The Mavs have done that in both of the first two games. He said, eventually, that will catch up with you. Their goal, get a quick start here in the first quarter and the third quarter and take this crowd out. You know what I say to that, Matt? Good luck. This crowd's awfully loud, aren't they? Well, Charles Barkley has said that they are one of the best fans in the NBA. And Kevin, when you look at the first quarter of uh, game one, game two, Portland has come away with the lead. Now, slim, yeah. but they've come away with the lead in each of the first two uh, first quarters. Yeah, no question. They've, they've come out and they've played well to start off. Portland has. And right now, if you're Dallas, you want to take this crowd out as much as you possibly can. It's electric in here. I mean, the people are on their feet. It's noisy. The Portland Trailblazers are banking on all this crowd energy, Matt. Get them pumped up, stir their defense up, and get a few turnovers. Get out the break and get a few dunks. And what did Rick Carlisle tell us? Poise. We're going to have poise tonight. And we are set for game three. Dallas wins the opening tip. Derek Stafford, Eric Lewis, Jason Phillips, and our three officials. Kidd turns a corner. Marion with the runner. Doesn't go. Chandler on the inside. A oh, great pass by Kidd. Skip pass over to Marion. And Tyson Chandler doing what he does. Hang around that glass. Get offensive rebounds and protect the paint on defense. Wesley Matthews, game one, just one of three. However, he responded in game two with double figures. Here's that one on one coverage. And going right at Tyson Chandler. And Chandler had early foul trouble in game two. Also got a technical foul, but worked through that. Yeah, I tell you, I think if, if I'm Portland, I'm going to keep punching into a Marcus Aldridge. Try to get the heart and soul of the defensive. David Dallas Mavericks with his Tyson Chandler out of the game. Aldridge knocks it down. That's the other thing he can do. He can step out and make that 15, 18 foot jump shot. But again, he, he is a tough, all around great offensive player, LaMarcus Aldridge. And Tyson Chandler is going to have to rise to the occasion. He did in game two. And settling in after picking up that technical foul, as we noted, knocked out of bounds. And Gerald Wallace picked up at the trade deadline. For Nate McMillan's team is lead assistant Bernie Bickerstaff. Use the first overall expansion pick and the Charlotte Bobcats for Gerald Wallace. Kidd gives it deep in the corner. Stevenson using the screen. Driving pass picked off. Transition opportunity. Aldridge with the hammer. That's what we talked about, the turnovers. Turnovers are a killer. If you turn it over, these Portland Trailblazers will get out and they'll run the floor. Novitski comes up short. Wallace with a rebound. In game two, the last 28 minutes, Dallas did not have a turnover. Portland had six in the fourth quarter. Down low on the right block. Shot doesn't go. Second chance opportunity.
Two minutes into game three. Camby up top. Matthews in the post once again to Aldridge. Kick out. Matthews to three. Kidd was favoring just a little bit. Yeah, Kidd dug in a little bit too much. He got that extra half step in, and Wes Matthews made him pay with a, with a big three. Another turnover right there. This is when they get out. This is when at their best. A great little drop pass off to Aldridge. And again, if for Portland to win, Matt, I think they've got to turn them over, get out in the break, and get some easy hoops. And that's what you talked about, getting out, getting in transition. And it's something that Nate McMillan talked to us about, backing down low, riding Aldridge. Shot doesn't fall, and Nate McMillan saying, we got to get Aldridge more touches. Went away from him in the fourth quarter of game two. Nice cut, and then the denial can be. Looking up into the 10th row. <laughs> That's where he threw the ball. That's why he's looking up there. Great defense by Camby, who's a great rim protector. And you see right there, and get that out of here. Kid. From downtown in this series, Kid has made nine threes, including six in game one. There's Matthews. Back to back threes. Wanted. It hasn't worked out in the first two games. No, it hasn't, but it's working out here in the third game right now. And nobody needed to get out of Dallas faster than Wesley Matthews. He got to the first shoot around. He had two left shoes. Not good. And he was all out of all, all out of sorts. And almost another turnover there. Then he gets a forehead contusion in game two. He gets back to the rose guard and he's like, I'm feeling good, man. I made two threes and I needed to get out of Dallas. You ever show up with two left shoes? No, but if you do, you can only go left. I know that. There's no going right if you have two left shoes. <laughs> Portland, 10 straight points after the Mavericks took a 2-0 lead to begin the game. Nowitzki shot too strong. Second chance now. Knocked away. Turnover. Matthews gets it to Miller. Aldridge, deep post position. And a whistle and a foul. Great deep post position right there by LaMarcus Aldridge. Running in the break, another turnover. Getting down early and causing a foul deep in the paint. And when LaMarcus catches it inside the charge circle down there, boy, I tell you, there's no defense for that. Just too long and too gifted. Nowitzki earns the foul. Three turnovers by Dallas. Here's Aldridge. Aldridge with the hook and it doesn't go and Nowitzki is there for the rebound. Jason Terry just checked in, knocked away by Wesley Matthews. It's going to be Dallas basketball. Nate, Nate McMillan is a man of his word. He said he's going to give the ball to Aldridge every time and he is. He's touched it every single time. And getting quality looks or throwing it out and getting his teammate shots. And a career season. Top 15 in points and rebounds. Count it, and a foul. Camby commits the foul, and Terry's headed to the free throw line. Say, watch him, watch him stop right there. Look at that clever move by Jason Terry. He stopped let the, on these curls. When you stop right there, guys, it makes it so all you college kids and high school kids, you come off those curls, take your time, read the defense, make that stop. The big guy's trailing you. He runs into you, you get the end one. Great move there by the Jet Terry. Rick Carlisle's been very pleased with his play in game one as well as game two. Although he has a combined 20 points, he said he's doing so many other things, playing an all-around game. Wallace with a post-up. Knocked away, and it's going to be Dallas basketball. You know, you might think you have a mismatch here, but Jason Kidd is strong, and he goes up and challenges. Great post defense there by the point guard, Jason Kidd. Marion. It's a double 
came right at Nowitzki. A great read by Dirk, low drop off. Murray makes a nice hard basket cut and gets rewarded with a, with a dunk. 5-0 run by Dallas coming out of that timeout. Three-point game. An offensive foul is called. It's on Gerald Wallace. The 38-year-old Jason Kidd taking that right in the chest. I mean, he stood in, and Wallace is a freight train coming, and boy, he wasn't afraid of him, and Jay Kidd does so many little things for to help his team. Terry driving. Nowitzki. Back on the inside, Chandler stumbling, falls, Camby with it. Camby out on the break. From the corner, Matthews. Three threes by Matthews, and that ball's barely touching his hands. I mean, he is knocking down the three and feeling really comfortable. And then he putting a lot of pressure on Jay Kidd, too. That's the matchup that uh, Nate wanted. Wanted Matthews on Jay Kidd. Another turnover. Wallace. Here's Matthews. Four three-pointers. Matthews feeling really good about being back home. Got out of Dallas in the corner, knocking down a three. He's got the right shoes, Kevin. <laughs> a right one and a left one. <laughs> having two left shoes for game one. So what did he do? Like everyone else, he went out shopping. He was gonna borrow the teammate shoes of rookie Armand Johnson, but it had an AJ and a number one stitched on the back of it. So he decided not to do that. Went out, bought a pair of shoes. He told me tonight, I just want a clean game and a couple of threes. I say he's already done that, Matt, don't you think? Absolutely, Marty. He has the last 12 Portland points. Kid, the open three. Delivers. And he's found the magic from beyond the three-point line in this series. Really shooting it well. Got a confidence. Got a little bit of a new stroke, a little, a little new thought when he's uh, when he's shooting and it's really working out for him. And talk about working out for him. Holy cow. Matthews is on fire. It's a two, not a three. Terry on the inside slips through. And the finger roll is good. Six-point game. Matthews with 14 of Portland's 18. Nowitzki on Aldridge. Aldridge hasn't been able to get that hook to go. No, that's his shot, though. He's getting it right deep in the paint, and that little right-hand jump hook going over the left shoulder is his shot. They'll live with that. Portland likes that shot. Nowitzki fading. Speaking of liking shots, that's Dirk's favorite shot. That little one-legged fadeaway, seven-foot guy, long arms. Nowitzki knocks that thing down, and that shot got Nate's attention. Portland by four here in game three. The Mavericks, six of 12. Terry coming off of the bench with five points. Wesley Matthews, though, leading the way with 14. At 38, one of the major stories in the first two games, Jason Kidd, 9 of 16 from three, including tonight now, 10 of 18, 18 points in game one. Game one, he had 24, and game two, he had 18 points. Unbelievable. Yeah, playing so well right now. Got a little mismatch there, Miller on uh, the big guy, Tyson Chandler. Uh, nice find by Miller in there in the paint, but Jay Kidd to finish that up has been phenomenal. I mean. At 38 years old, what he's able to accomplish out here, he handles the ball, you know, he's had a couple turnovers today, but he's really taking good care of the ball all series long and, and bringing the scoring that Dallas needs desperately. Ever been in that situation? At that age, trying to get things done. Terry. I, yeah, 38, I was three years retired. <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, the song they said, the song we played was The Body Says No. Yeah, yeah. yeah my body said no starting at about 33. <laughs> 
Wesley Matthews with the hook, and Matthews continues to deliver. Six to six, 16 points. Nice little hard curl there by Matthews, and uh, getting, getting, getting the hoop and getting an easy shot for him. Normally, he's taking three. Starakovic, who was so big in game two with 21 points, misses the three. Nicholas Batum to the cutting Camby and a foul. And it's on Chandler. That's going to be his second. Here comes Brendan Haywood. Nice hard cut down the gut there by Camby and got it. Got a little half step on Chandler and Chandler came up from behind him and got a little bit of push on that shot. And that's a big foul. I mean, again, Portland's able to get two fouls on Chandler early in the early in the game. Let's send it over to Marty Snyder. Marty? And Marcus Camby tonight, Matt, playing with a strained right thumb. They did x-rays on the thumb earlier today. What happened was in game two, late in the game, he got the thumb caught in someone's jersey. And he was worried about it because it was his blocking hand. And he initially said, you know what, no x-rays. But I talked to him before the game, and he said, you know, I decided finally do some x-rays. They were negative. He's fine, but certainly playing with a little bit of pain tonight. It is the playoffs. And, of course, he did make that three from the corner. Yeah, with the bad thumb. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a big three in, in game two. Terry. Cut off by Camby. Finds Haywood on the roll. Nice hard roll by Hayward and nice pass by the Jet Terry, finding him right at the front of the rim. And as much as uh, look at the momentum the Blazers have. Yeah. Really, here, you know, look at the Mavericks are just down by four on the inside. That's Camby. More Elliott than any other team in the league all through the regular season, and they still got that play going on in here against Dallas. And I, I tell you what, that drives Coach Carlisle completely nuts to get those Elliott dunks. Kid up top here, Stoyakovic. Haywood has it knocked away in another Maverick turnover. They're fifth. Aldridge slows it up. Miller back up top. Matthews. Wesley Matthews now six of seven. His first miss. Kid to Marion. Offensive foul. Foul on Marion. Yeah, if you get up high at all and show, which Marion did, if you get on the high side of these Portland Trailblazers, they're gonna roll hard to the hoop. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna spin out and get the alley oop, and you saw it right there. Brandon Roy checking in. Brandon Roy issuing a, an apology for his comments following Game Two, in which he you know, came out and talked about the fact that you know, he was hurt by not being used. He said, I always thought I would be treated better, and that was a little bit disappointing for me when he saw Patty Mills and Rudy Fernandez in the game before him as Aldridge finishes. He said he fought back tears on the bench. And yeah, and nice hard drive there by Jet Terry. And you know what? Brandon made an apology. He did the one mistake he can't make. He put himself before the team. He started talking about his, how he felt. It's all about the team first. And Nate, I tell you what, when I, Nate McMillan, who's a great coach, he came out and said, hey, we're going to put the team first. It's all about, we got to win this series. Brandon Roy is a tremendous player. He's fighting through some injuries. You know, he has no cartilage left in one of his knees. It's bone on bone. And they don't really know how he's going to play from night to night when he steps on the floor. But again, I was really happy to see Brandon, who's a quality young man, really a good kid. I was happy to hear him say, I was sorry. I put myself before the team, and I shouldn't do that. And that's not his personality. He's a really a quality young man, all-star for three years, and just trying to figure out his new role, Matt, with, with you know, knees that just aren't reacting well to an NBA season so far. Had both of them scope back in January. January, yeah. And, of course, you go back to last season, and when he, after having knee surgery, came back eight days later to play in the postseason. Nate McMillan spoke to him yesterday. Fernandez, can he get a three? Shot doesn't go. Marion 
Comes down with it, and Nate McMillan telling us that he didn't know about the comments until getting on the plane. And so yesterday, they sat around and had a conversation. And, and this has been a major issue, certainly in game two, outscored 39 to 11. No question, the three guys are on the floor right now, with two of them, Roy and Fernandez, and Rudy Fernandez had a wide open shot there on that right slot, and everybody in Portland was hoping and praying that went in to get him off the schneid. They need to get their bench to perform from the, for them. They're not gonna be able to beat this Dallas Mavericks team unless their bench can come out and really give them some points and give them some spark from time to time. And speaking of spark, how about this kid, Jason Terry, come, since he came in the game for Dallas, has given him a huge spark. And Terry now with 10 points off the bench already. In just seven minutes of action, yep. you see the bench doing it once again. Roy on the inside, kick out Wallace. Wallace once again on the wing to Fernandez. Batum backing down on Kidd. Shot clock at five. Shot doesn't fall. Kidd handles. Under a minute remaining here in this opening quarter and Dallas trailed 10-2 they kind of weathered this early on here yeah they did I mean they had a barrage by Wesley Matthews came out and just threw everything at him and you know Dallas is just taking their time kind of similar how they started the other couple first quarters and they're saying hey let's just get it let's get a hoop here let's finish the quarter strong and uh, you know move, move on from there shot clock down to four, and Haywood is fouled. And so he'll go to the free throw line where he has struggled immensely. Well, I tell you what, all you kids out there right now, get ready to close your eyes when Brendan Haywood starts shooting these free throws because I don't think you want to have this image in your mind. He's, he's really struggling. I'm telling you, the poor kid's struggling like crazy from the, from the line. That was better. That almost went in. He, 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 missed, he missed the rim. I'm not kidding you. In the second game, he, he the missed flag. the rim. There was an American flag way on the right-hand side of the board. He was closer to the, to the flag than he was to the rim. He, he's really got some psychological problems. At the line. He's, he's got some issues, okay? <laughs> Four is seven. Mavs at the free throw line. Roy comes up short. Here's Stojakovic. Driving, finger roll, gets it. Portland's going to play for final shot, 26-23. Yeah, Stoyakovich looked back and said, why are you throwing that ahead and make me getting in a race with Rudy Fernandez? Stoyakovich not known for his wheels, Peja Stoyakovich. Roy. Big bucket there for his confidence. First bench point here in game three for Portland. And the first quarter comes to an end. 28-23 Blazers. And Dallas weathers a, an onslaught by Wesley Matthews. They got to be sitting over there saying, okay, guys, you know, we've got the game where we want it. We're okay. Let's keep playing. And let's quit turning the ball over. Onslaught there, Rick. How were you able to keep it to five there? Well, we kept our composure and we stayed aggressive. And, uh, you know, Jason Terry came in and made some good things happen. Aggressive. And, uh, you know, Jason Terry came in and made some good things happen. Uh, but the whole game is going to be like this. So we're going to have to hang in. An unchar uncharacteristic six turnovers. What are they doing defensively to cause that? Well, they've, they've turned up the pressure like we, uh, like we knew that they would. And we, we, we eventually responded okay, but we got to do better. Thanks, Rick. Yep. Matt? How's that? Well, they've, they've turned up the pressure like we, uh, like we knew that they would. And we, we, we eventually responded okay, but we got to do better. Thanks, Rick. Yep. Matt? All right, Marty. Six turnovers in that first quarter. Kevin had a franchise playoff low of six all of game two. J.J. Barea now on the floor. Yeah, the pressure was turned up by uh, Dallas, or by, by Portland, as you see Stojakovic knocked down a three, well guarded by Wallace. We got those six turnovers, uncharacteristic. And you know, Jason, Jason Kidd had one turnover in the first two games, had three there in the first quarter. And this is really where Nate McMillan needs 
some of his bench players to come through. Wallace on the inside. Shot doesn't go. Two-point advantage for Portland. Batum had 10 of the 11 points off of the bench for Portland in game two. Perea finds Haywood on the inside. And he is fouled by Batum. Nice hard roll again by Hayward, getting down the middle, drawing a foul on Batum. But now there's three starters on the floor, Matt. There's seven reserves out there. And this is where Dallas has been able to really extend the game, get some leads, and play really well. Now, can the Portland bench here at home play better? Can, these, can, can Roy, can Fernandez, can Batum, can these guys supply points? And, oh my goodness, he made one. All right, ready to go. Um, See, and <laughs> so he heard your criticism. I'm not criticizing, I'm just saying he's struggling some from the line. But getting back to what I was talking about, Portland has got to be able to come out here against this bench and make two in a row. Good job for you, Brendan. And they've got to be able to just, just hang in there and, and, and hopefully keep this lead for Portland. Haywood, a 36% free throw shooter during the regular season. Portland 2-0 at home during the regular season against Dallas. Fernandez will wave it off. Offensive foul. Fernandez, his second. And again, who's in there putting his nose right in the middle of it? J.J. Barea taking another one in the chops. He got one in the chops in the second game. He does stick his head in there, and he's not afraid to you know, get dirty. And J.J. Barea played big, big, meaningful minutes for this Dallas, game, uh, Dallas team in game two. In the fourth quarter, all of his six points earned. Shot clock at five. Terry will shake Jimmy in the three. And now Dallas with the three-point advantage. Portland led by nine. Roy. Uh, he looked good. He really elevated on that one. And I think that's a big indication of how he feels. He got up on that jump shot, had a little fade over Brendan Haywood. That's a very good sign here for Portland. Nowitzki straight Ooh. line drive. You don't see Dirk throw it down too often, especially with one hand, and Nowitzki going to the hole hard. Mavericks. Own the best road record in the Western Conference at 28 and 13. Aldrich. He's got that sweet stroke. Smooth shot. Had a little switch there, and he didn't even see Jason Terry. He just shot right over the top of him. Mavericks by one. Perea, fearless, goes on the inside, finds Stojakovic. Nice little dish there by. J.J. Barea getting the teeth of the defense and finding Stoyakovic. Turnover underneath by Batum. Dallas. My three here in game three. Terry. To Nowitzki. Count it! And the foul on Aldridge. Largest lead for the Mavs. Second on Aldridge. And a Rick Carlisle's team, Kevin, taking this crowd out of it. Nice and quiet in here, and that's exactly the way you want it in the playoffs. When you're on the road, you want it nice and quiet. Great run here by the Dallas Mavericks. Really fired by J Jason the Jet Terry. Conference first round of Brandon Roy averaged better than 26 points in Portland's six game series loss to Houston. Roy scored 42 points in game two and then also added 31 in game four. Trying to find that magic once again. Yeah, you know, two short years ago he was the face of the franchise. They thought perennial all star. We're going to, boy, we'll be able to build around him and all of a sudden now he's become a role player coming off the bench. His knees haven't allowed him to play long minutes and, and adjusting to a role where this is really now LaMarcus Aldridge's team from the offensive standpoint. They're going to go through Aldridge and again, you know, that's a tough transition to make as a youngster. It's hard enough. I mean, we've all made it as we got older. 
But that's very, very tough to make at his age. 26 years of yeah. age. It's not as if you're 32, Kev, or 33 or 34 years of age. And as Nate McMillan has said, you know, it has been up and down. He did have 21 points off of the bench in a march against Dallas. Roy posting up, firing over Terry. Yeah, he's got a big size mismatch over Terry there and did a really nice job of elevating. Again, he looks lively today as you see the Blazers in the 2-3 zone. Berea driving, pulls back. What a spark off of the bench. He's fearless. He took Aldridge off the dribble, rose up and shot over a seven foot one guy. Unreal, great, you know, great little shot there by J.J. Berea. Dallas is 15 of 22, 68 points. On the short corner, Aldridge knocks it down. That was caused because they came down on Brandon Roy and double teamed him. Opened up, that, and that's what Nate McMillan wants. Nate McMillan wants to draw a double team and make Dallas scramble in their, out, in their defense. And he, he hasn't been able to do that yet. Levitsky. Wallace comes away with it. Miller, Matthews, Wallace, Aldridge, and Roy. Miller posting up on Berea. And a foul on the floor. And it's going to be on Berea. Now Roy's got a nice size advantage over from Jason Terry. Takes his time, gets in the paint. Here he does right there. Look at he elevates up, gets nice extension on that shot, nice arch on that shot, and looking very good in that post. And again, Nate McMillan talked about um, getting us an advantage in the post size-wise. And then our players have got to make shots, have got to make plays from there. No. Some offensive. Oh, they got. They got a some confusion on the call. They're going to count it. Yes. Oh, I thought the initial signal yeah. was an offensive foul. You could see the reaction of <laughs> Andre Miller saying, "What? He still has that. Come on now." Give, him it, give it to me in the post. Exactly. I'm posting up J.J. Barea. I got so mad I pulled the gum out of my mouth. <laughs> but he's a good post player. Andre Miller has been a good play, post player since his rookie year in this league. He really can handle the ball down there. And what he can do down there, Matt, he can make plays. If you double team him, he'll find his teammates and a, a very clever post player. In his 12th season, 35 years of age. First three of the game has six assists as Andre Miller. The foul, the second on Berea. Tough guard here for Matthews. Nowitzki. What a tough shot. I mean, I, I didn't think that was going to go from my angle. It looked like, you know, he banked that in. And, you know, he had Wesley Matthews on him much taller and just rose up and banked it in up over him. Nowitzki, 4-7. Eight points. Here's Miller. Here's that matchup again, trying to take advantage of Miller in the post. And like I said, he's clever. He's spinning, and uh, he must have been a heck of a post player, like using seventh and eighth grade. <laughs> he must have just been a killer down there. Here's Kidd from outside. Haywood scoops it up. 43-41. Nice minutes by Haywood so far, and they're filling in for Tyson Chandler with two fouls. He's got six points being active and doing a nice job defensively also. And the bench doing it once again. Going back to the post. Nowitzki comes away with a rebound. Here's Kidd, eyes the three. Matthews with a rebound. Roy out of the wing behind the back. Wallace attacking. Roy the three. Four of five. Portland by one. Cinco's stat of the night presented by Corona. Dirk Nowitzki, what wow. great company. Look at, look at 25 those points and 10 rebounds.
Elgin Baylor, Akeem Olajuwon, and Bob Pettit, and there is Dirk Nowitzki. I mean, those are all-time greats. That, that, that's an amazing statistic. I, uh, boy, it just shows you how good he's been for, and how long he's been. 44-43. Portland by one. Portland closed out the regular season by winning 10 of 11 at home. Chandler just picked up his third. And this is how you get there. You do stuff like this. Wow, tough angle, solid defense by Wes Matthews, and Dirk just went up over the top of him with, a pant with, with his patented one-legged step back fadeaway. That's a big story right there. Tyson Chandler on the, on the bench with three fouls. Matthews driving right to the bucket. 18 first half points for Wesley Matthews. Terry. Wallace climbs up and snares the rebound. Roy, nine points. Matthews with a left hand and a foul on Terry. Boy, they are really picking on, picking on those mismatches down low. I mean, every time that they see a mismatch, that time it was Wes Matthews on uh, Jet Terry. They're going to it. You know, they started, Miller did a little bit on Berea. You had uh, uh, Brandon Roy trying to shoot over uh, Jet Terry. So they're, they've kind of inverted their offense. They got their guards posted up, Matt, right now. And, uh, you know, getting away from LaMarcus Aldridge, but having success doing it. Here's a look at the upcoming national TV schedule. Tomorrow, game three on ESPN. Celtics, Knicks, followed by the Lakers and the Hornets. Down in the Big Easy. And then on ESPN two, the Magic and the Hawks, game three. Fun night of basketball tomorrow night. That is going to be a Every ball night. to watch. Yeah, exactly. Playoffs have been fantastic. Haywood on the inside and a foul. And the foul's going to be... It's on Andre Miller, and that is his first 7-0 Portland run. And 4 16 remaining here in this first half. And the three officials coming together. And Miller, the reason why he's having a few words is because he said it wasn't in the act. Yeah. They finally got together, the yep. referees got together, said it wasn't in the act, and uh, it'll be side out for the Dallas Mavs. Here comes Camby in for Roy. How about the response? Yeah, nice hand, well-deserved nice hand there for uh, Brandon Roy, making a few shots coming out, especially after the comments he made. Yep. He's got to feel way better sitting over on that bench right now, knowing he's contributing and really playing well. A whistle and a foul on Marcus Camby. Roy, 10 minutes, nine points, four or five shooting. Camby picking up the foul. That's his second. And I'm sure the, the mind of Brandon Roy kind of clears a little bit yeah. after game one and game well, two. Well, you relax. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You relax, Matt. Then you let the game come to you. You played it since you were a little kid. And you quit putting that pressure on yourself and just relax. Nowitzki. Look back at Wesley Matthews, who got hung up a little bit. Three-point game. Miller pulls it back out. Nowitzki, eight of his ten here in the second quarter. Matthews over Terry. Air ball, weak side rebound for Marion. Carlisle talks about getting out in transition. And their offense starting with their D. Push shot, Terry. Terry with 15 off of the bench. I was just going to say, he's battling Matthews point for point here almost. And the, the tempo slowed down a little bit. It's getting, you know, it was a little more racehorse in, in, game, in game two. And now all of a sudden, it's slowing down a little bit. The crowd's getting out of it. And the Mavericks are finding their rhythm. And I tell you what, it's, a lot of their rhythm is just due to this guy, number 31, 
The Jet Terry, he goes in there. Look at him under control, eyeing up the big guys, throwing up the floater. Take some of that with you. Here, keep running. Get that ball out, run. Get that ball out, let's run. That has been the mindset of Nate McMillan since game one. Get out and go. Yeah, you know what? Dallas Mavericks haven't turned it over. One turnover this quarter, so yeah. not as easy to run against uh, when, you're not, when you're not turning them over. And good, good three there by Wes Matthews. Just happened to miss it. Marion gets it back from Nowitzki. Double comes. Defense racing around. Kid the three, and it doesn't go. Canby with a rebound. Matthews quickly in the post. Wallace. Haywood guarding Aldridge. Aldridge. Well, he faces up getting that triple back position. He steps you off with that right foot, steps you off again. If you back off or drop on your hands, Matt, he just rises up and shoots it. You know, that's really his pet move down there. That and that little jump hook in the paint over his left shoulder, right hand. He's made his last four in a row. Terry, good. How about the bench of Dallas? They've outscored their starters. Forget about outscoring yeah. the bench of Portland. Yeah, they, they've outscored. Yeah, they look at the 32 to nine bench, bench points, and actually they've outscored their starters 32 to 17. Top of the circle. That one spills out. Dallas with an opportunity to regain the lead. Nowitzki denied by Wallace, his first block in the series. Matthews gives it now to Miller. Camby looks for Aldridge and he's fouled. Well, if you can't get turnovers, the next best thing are block shots. And look what this creates. All of a sudden, he goes up. He's so active as a 3-4 type guy. And all those block shots, turnovers, they lead to runouts or mismatches, and that's how Portland wants to play. They want to get the pace pushed up. You heard Nate McMillan talking about all that pace, and that's what he wants. He wants to push that, push that Dallas, attack them before they can set their defense. Not in the act of shooting. Side out of bounds. Roy is in for Camby. They go back to Aldrich. The hook. And it's last touch by Wesley Matthews, and it's Dallas basketball. The steal, Brandon Roy. Miller. Just when we talk about not turning it over, Dallas Mavericks by a half-court pass and gets stolen by Brandon Roy, leading to a layup for Miller. Roy has all nine points for the bench of Portland. He's making a difference on the floor. Comes up with a big steal there. Nowitzki the free. They are struggling versus the pick and roll right now. They're putting two on guys. They're running off them. They're leaving Nowitzki wide open for a three. And right now, the coverage on the pick and roll for Portland is really haphazard. Second chance. Tied at 52. Matthews pulls it back out on a crossover, driving right to the rim. 22. Great attack by Wesley Matthews. A switch, got Brendan Hayward on him, got out there, kind of rose up like he's in a huge jump shot, crossed him over, got a layup. Great move by Wes. Portland with a two-point advantage at halftime, 54 to 52. That's the end of the first half. Coming up after a quick break, 
EJ, Kenny, and Charles will bring you the T-Mobile Halftime Report from our Atlanta studios. My two here in game three. It's time for the innovative analysis presented by Exxon Mobile. What you have right here is a break coming down with Camby in the middle, and you've got to stretch that man all right there, Jason Terry. And how do you do it? You got to get Matthews all the way to the corner, and now you got to get Miller in the slot here and get that 15 to 20 foot spacing. And we clear it. Let's run and see what happens. All right, nice pass over. They got great spacing. Jet Terry gets caught in the wash right there between two players. Knock it, throw it over to West Matthews who knocks down a three, but he not, but he did the, the three goggles. I'm you not like a fan that? of the no. no, the no more three goggling. I don't okay. like the fan Camby of the three goggles. As well after the three. Well he should he can do it because he makes one every every blue moon, but no more three goggles. Alrighty, let's take a look at the McDonald's game summary. Portland. 54-52, Dallas shooting 60% wow. on the road. That bench has been phenomenal. Sure has, and the first five minutes right here for Dallas is gonna be the ball game. Keep the crowd out of it, stay close, and don't let them get any separation in his first five minutes. A loose ball foul. And it's gonna be out of Marcus Camby. The bench in the first half. For Dallas, 12 of 14, Oof. 32 points. And Jason Terry comes out to start the second half and knocked away along with Marion, Nowitzki, Chandler, and Kidd. And another foul. Two quick on ones Camby. here. Yep, two quick ones here. Portland on, on the Portland Trailblazers and a nice little back cut there by Dirk Nowitzki and uh, drew a defender and got tripped up. Fourth on Marcus Camby. Dallas Mavericks with Terry in the first half 17 points coming off the bench six and seven it begins the third quarter, Camby leaves, Batum is on the floor. And they've gotten very small, Matt, right yes. here. The Portland Trailblazers have taken out Camby and putting in Batum. Batum right now on Chandler. Here's Terry driving wide open. It's Nowitzki. It's like shoot around. Oh, great drive by Terry, the draw and kick. And this is what they want to do. They want to come down in the ageless wonder. <laughs> Jay Kidd comes in with a great block, runs it down, and uh, great transition defense there by the Dallas Mavericks. You, know, you talked about early on here in the third right now. Crowd not a factor. Nowitzki. Wallace able to gather the rebound, and he gets it to Miller. Long pass, and it leads to a turnover. And again, who got a hand on that? Jay Kidd. Getting back on defense and rising up and uh, getting a hand on that to get the turnover. This is the matchup that Dirk loves. He just goes at it hard. Oh, called traveling on that one. But that's the matchup that Dirk likes. Of all the matchups he gets, when he has Batum on him, he is so much more aggressive and he ended up calling it travel there. But he puts his head down right here. Watch what he does. When he gets him, he puts his head down and yeah, he did. He did a little traveling there before he got into his patented one-legged step back. Motor runner. Well, he is on the fourth quarter in the first two games of this series. Open look on the outside for Aldridge. He's unable to deliver, and Marion handles it. Dallas slowing it down here. Aldrich now on Nowitzki. Here's Terry, the three. And the net barely moved. How about the Jet? He's taken off for 20 points. Big, big first half coming up the second half. And what does he do? Measures him up and just rises up right over to right over West Matthews. And this is what I love. I love a hard drive. Was it set up? The kick to one of the best shooters in the history of the NBA, Dirk Nowitzki.
basketball. And, and I think sometimes going back to the community, it puts things in perspective. We love working with the kids. They see the type of players we are on the court, but we want to teach them how to be good people. Part of being a celebrity is that young kids are going to follow you. So it's our responsibility to, to own up to that and, and do the best we can to, to be a positive role model for those young kids. He's been a uh, positive tonight for the Portland Trailblazers. Roy, nine points in 11 minutes, two assists. Miller along with Matthews, Batum, Aldridge, and Wallace. All bottled up on the inside. Here's Aldridge backing down. And Nowitzki is on him. And a foul. Aldridge is going to head to the free throw line. They mixed up the coverage a little bit there with Chandler and Nowitzki. Yeah, they did a little rip screen, and they got the Chandler got caught up actually, and uh, Dirk had to jump out there on Aldridge's side out here, wasn't in the act of shooting. But you know, Dirk feels pretty comfortable guarding Aldridge. Gets his hand up, makes him shoot over him, and it doesn't make anything easy. Aldridge, shot clock down to three, at two. Aldridge lets it fly at the buzzer. Say it, between he and Dirk, those are two sweet shooting big men, Matt. 14 points now for Aldridge. Crowd getting back in it. Nowitzki cut off. Aldridge, one arm rebound. Dallas with a one point advantage. Miller going right at Chandler with the foul issues that Chandler has. Exactly. Chandler had to go straight up and be a little bit uh, careful there. And Miller took advantage. Nice and spinning little layup there by Andre Miller. Trading baskets. Now a turnover. And Wallace gives it right back. All right, let's bring in Marty. Matt talked with Nate McMillan right after halftime in it. He said, we stopped running and started trading baskets, and we can't do that. He said, we've got to push the tempo and put pressure on their defense. He said, also, as much as LaMarcus Aldridge is in the paint, he has zero free throws. He needs to attack. For Carlisle, you see the one change. Jason Terry on Matthews trying to slow him down. All right, thanks. Here's Terry tough to slow him down. <laughs> yeah. I think he's just going to try to just score with them. Here's Terry. Lights it up. You know, Kenny Smith was talking about it at halftime. And Rick Carlisle has talked about it throughout hey, after Dirk no pecking order. And, and Kenny was talking about the fact you have to have guys like Wesley Matthews step up big, which he did in the first half. And a loose ball foul. And the foul's on Chandler. Boy, it's a tough call for them. The Chandler goes up. They extend, they both go up with two hands, and up, yeah, he does, he does catch him with the backhand as he comes around him, but yeah, he does catch him pretty cleanly in the head there. Boy, it's a tough foul for Tyson Chandler, you know, no intent in it, just kind of flailing his arm there and caught him in the head, and fourth personal foul there for their best interior defender. Finished third and voting for defensive player of the year. Highest finish ever for a Dallas Maverick player. I voted for him. That's number one. Miller, the three. Miller had 18 in the first two games. He has a dozen here. Shot clock at seven. Kid looking for the cutting Terry. Ball fake, spinning, and a travel. Good defense there by the Portland Trailblazers. Wesley Matthews, he bodied up on Terry, got him. He picked up the dribble, he kept his body on him and enforced a, a travel there by the Jet. Dallas with 11 turnovers. 11 points off of the previous 10. Haywood now on Aldridge. Aldridge trying to attack. Shot doesn't go. Had that one hard dribble and then the step back. Yeah, 
Similar to Dirk. I mean, you know, he, he does that. I think I think what Nate wants him to do is get him and get to the middle and use that jump hook and get some contact and get to the free throw line. Kid getting in the lane of Marion. He's got that in his bag of tricks. He had that at UNLV. <laughs> and it never looks like it never looks like it's gonna go into me. He's got throw throw shots. He's such an unorthodox player, but boy, he makes that thing steady. Four-time All-Star in his days in Phoenix. Dallas back up by one. Double comes. Miller, they give him the three. Shot doesn't go, and he thought about it for a while. Yeah, he did. He made two late in the game in uh, in Dallas, and he made one this uh, this game already. So he just rise up and shoot it. If that's the shot they're going to give you, you got to shoot it with confidence. Portland six of ten from beyond the arc. Majority of that were done by Wesley Matthews. Nowitzki has it taken away by Miller. Three on two. Matthews slowed up by Terry. This is exactly what Nate McMillan wants. He wants those turnovers, and, and you know, it, it starts in there. It's a little bit of a bobble play. Dirk puts his head down. He tries to spin on him right there, right back into Batum. Puts the ball in his chest. Then it's off to the races, and uh, Jason Terry, nice foul there on Wes Matthews, not to give him a layup. But again, we talked about it. That's what they want. They want to get turnovers. They want to run. That, that Portland Trailblazers is at their best. TNT this June. The team is back. Leverage returns with a new season of bigger cons. This June only on TNT. And, and it's interesting because even you know, when we were talking to Rick Carlisle, I said, you know, yes, that's the way that Portland likes to play, but they're not a high possession team. No. And it's that's, not like they're no. out there running every single, but they pick their spots. Agreed, but you know what? That's how he feels they have to beat this Dallas Mavericks yeah. team. Throughout the year, they've been a low possession team. They walk it up. They, they play differently, but he felt for, in order for them to beat the Mavericks, Coach Nate McMillan said, we've got to put pace in the game, and we've got to get steals, and we've got to get fast break points. Beret on the floor for Terry. Stojakovic in for Marion. Shot clock down to two. Kid has to take it, and he makes it. The ageless wonder. And a foul as Matthews was attacking. Big shot by Jay Kidd there, I tell you. The, the clock's running down. Beret gets caught, picks up his dribble. He's got no one to throw it to. He finds Jay Kidd with that new using the V, putting the finger, spraying the hand out there with his shooting coach, Dirk Nowitzki, helping him. <laughs> he feels a real confident from that three point line. Been shooting it great this whole series. He'd be a good shooting coach to have, don't you think? Miller. Yeah. Aldridge with a follow. Yeah, Aldridge only with two rebounds. Yeah, I was just going to say, got to the offensive glass, and that's one thing he hasn't been doing. He hasn't been getting to the offensive glass at all so far tonight. Wallace guarding Nowitzki, spins away. And you know, this is what happens with penetration. Look when the guy goes, what does Aldridge do? You got you just got to follow right in there with him. Gets up on the board, he misses it, and Aldridge is there. And so many guys go for that pick and pop, Matt. They stand out there and they say, I want to shoot a 20-footer. You know what? You're seven foot tall. Get around the basket. There's a lot of good things happening under the basket. Matt, you ever hang out there under no, the basket? No, no, not no. like you. you. You lived down there, didn't you? I shot threes for a while. I lost my mind and <laughs> shot threes like for like a, <laughs> a half a year. Yes, but we were talking about that. I know. Shooting. Very poor three point shooting. <laughs> As I, that one year you shot 40%. We yeah. had to break out the book actually on, on that conversation. As I said, I lost my mind momentarily and got out of the paint. Much more comfortable in the paint. <laughs> Knocked away. Here comes Dallas. Correa gives it up. Here's a three. Nowitzki, no. Wallace with the board. Portland. Chance to tie or take the lead. Wesley Matthews. And against Berea. Again, they're in the break. They see a matchup they like. They go down to JJ. Oh, man, he hit him right dead in the chops again. Ooh, and they called the fall on JJ. They counted it, and he's heading to the line. Tough call for Berea. No, they didn't count it. Yeah, that was before, but they're in the penalty now. 
so they're going to shoot two free throws on every okay. foul. I agree. Very tough. Very tough foul. I mean, J.J. did everything he needed to do. Stood in there, took him head on, and I tell you what, J.J. Barea sticks his chin in there all the time. Brandon Roy enters the game again and had a great first half. He nice did. to see Brandon make some shots, and uh, they, they got to keep his minutes around 20 to 24. Uh, Matt, they didn't. They don't want to extend him more than that. And so, you know, it's always tough. But you know, when you have when you have a minutes limit on you, and you start playing really well, you just look at the coach. You want to say, Coach, let's extend those minutes. I mean, I'm feeling it tonight. I'm feeling good. Let me go a little bit longer. But they're trying to keep him, like I say, between 20 and 24 minutes. Matthews, five or six from the line, shooting two there, 25 points, a playoff career best performance last year. Played for Utah. Made it into the second round with the Jazz. Stoyakovich, Haywood, Marion on the floor with Kidd and Terry. Stoyakovich, tough angle. Haywood, second chance opportunity, and he throws it to Rick Carlisle. Mm. Good offensive rebound there by Brendan, but just take your time. You know, there's no rush. You have new 24 second. Just got a little bit excited there and uh, threw the ball, like you said, right to Rick Carlisle. Tied at 66. Miller, Matthews, Aldridge, Batum, and Roy. Aldridge fading. Oh, what a tough shot! Aldridge over Haywood. Portland regains the lead by 2 68 66. Great shot. Good defense. Just better offense right there. Brendan Haywood does everything you're supposed to. He bodies him up on the dribble. Gets a hand up, extends. Gets the length of Aldridge going up high. Look at it again. Look at that high release. He's got a soft touch, ladies and gentlemen, for a seven-footer. Third, this play under review they've changed the score to 66 66 I'm gonna stop right there you can see clearly zero up red light on ball in the hands right there and it's, it's, this is a basket and they and they actually you saw it didn't count you know Tyson Chandler was the first one to call it he was saying immediately it was and I, I saw it live it was very close and they disallowed that basket so they went over at the timeout and reviewed it. And so Portland without the lead now, tied at 66. Marion has Roy on him, spins, counted in the foul. Marion goes to the line. Boy, good, solid, hard move there by Marion. Again, kind of that, he's a very unorthodox player. He, he has so many different release points, but he's still solid down there. And, you know, when you scouted him when he was at UNLV many, many years ago, he was like a like a center in that, in that offense. He just played around the basket, and you just didn't know what kind of player he was going to be, but he shined with Mike D'Antoni in, in um, Phoenix for years playing that small, that four, playing a small four, but running and just making plays and filling in nicely here for uh, Dallas after Karan Butler went out. Now, Kevin, look at the composure that Dallas is played with here tonight up to nothing questions about what they could do on the road they've struggled on the road in the postseason they have come out here tonight and they withstood that early barrage and a travel by Marion a uh, great bullet pass by Jay Kidd in there to Marion, and Marion just couldn't keep that pivot foot down. He pump faked, had him in the air, and had he been able to keep that pivot foot down, that chance to draw foul. You know, Rick Carlisle said, you know, we got to stay on task. We got to yeah. have the concentration, make plays, and they've been able to do that. He, he said, you know, we've been a good road team during the regular season. He said, doesn't guarantee anything in the postseason, and they found that out last season. Haywood with the rebound. Again, went with a mismatch with Toom over Terry, and Terry wouldn't give him an inch, made him take a tough shot. Dallas by three. 
Marion on the inside, knocked away by Batum. Here comes Roy. Gives it to Aldridge. Roy getting to the rim. Brandon Roy, 11 points. The only bench player for Nate McMillan to score. One point game. Weak side by Dallas was hugged up there. Opened up the lane. Brandon saw it and got right to the front of the rim, laid it in. Stojakovic. Fernandez sneaks in, grabs a rebound. Portland ball with 14 seconds remaining of the shot clock. Ida Wallace is going to re enter the action. Berea and Nowitzki. Matthew steps off, Kitt and Marion. Matthews, 25 points, a playoff career best. Yep, hearing it from the crowd. Really got him off to a great start and it's kept him around. Great game so far by Matthews. And right now, Dallas has gotten very small in the backcourt. Let's see if uh, Portland can take advantage of that. Roy. Roy gets fouled. In the act. Finishes. He's going to the line. And this is what he wanted from himself. Absolutely. Again, watch the elevation. Look at a little fade right there. And just nice and controlled. And what Brandon Roy was for years in this league was a very controlled ball handling two guard that ran a lot of mid pick and rolls and was very under control. Didn't turn the ball over. It could rise up and make that little 15, 17 foot jump shot just like that. He's got good legs today, Matt. He's got good elevation and his legs look very lively to me. 14 in 14 minutes. He's lively. Yeah. Stojakovic, air ball. Ooh, too much club. Yeah, shot that one right over the, <laughs> over the rim. He went with the seven iron, should have been an eight. <laughs> it's happened talk. before. Yeah, and talked to his caddy. Yeah. Crossover. Roy gives it up. Wallace, no, denied by Nowitzki. Oh, Haywood takes it away. Great move by Roy and great backside help by Dirk Nowitzki there with the block. Terry the three. Wow. Oh, and he, first time I've seen him put the flaps out on the jet right there. I tell you what, what a cold blooded three. Great defense by Dirk, and then a cold blooded three by Jason Terry. And Roy tries to answer with the old fashioned three pointer, but he left the line and burn him. Terry with 26, 72, 71. Mavs, he's got nine in the quarter. And that's after a great defensive uh, block by, oh, you know, you missed it. He had the flaps out there for a while, but a great defensive block up by Dirk on, on, on the defensive end for Dallas. And big cold-blooded three right there by Jet Terry. Sunday MLB on TBS heads to historic Wrigley Field for a National League clash between the Dodgers and the Cubs this Sunday, 2.15 Eastern Ooh. on TBS. Wrigley Field is a fun place yeah, to watch a baseball fun. game. I'll tell you what, stop by Cubby Bears there and have yourself a hamburger. Tell them Mikhail sent you. Oh, yeah. Tell them Mikhail sent you. And, and what will that do for you? <laughs> Nothing. They'll probably charge you double. <laughs> but at least tell them I sent you. Portland by one. Correa, no. Batum. And he's fouled by Nowitzki. His third. Say what a great weak side blocker coming up, getting it, boy, right at the top, and I, they're off to the races. And again, we talked about it, and you can see Dirk with the foul there. Turnovers, block shots, so much easier to run on those, Matt. The two 84 percent from the free throw line during the regular season. First bench points for Portland outside of Brandon Roy. Yep. 
and Portland put it as put in Chris Johnson who hasn't played yet and he was the one who got that block shot and he comes up big with the rebound and Chris Johnson's all energy as you see Roy Ooh. Chris Johnson coming in and how about the play of Roy 16 points off of the bench Portland ends a quarter Kevin on a 9-3 run over the last two minutes fourth quarters coming up Portland up by three will it be 2-1 or 3-0. Millen, you are up three here. You wanted a more aggressive LaMarcus Aldridge. You've got it. Does he have an even bigger green light in the fourth, Coach? Well, we need to win this quarter. We've lost uh, both fourth quarters in the first two games. Uh, we need to continue to pressure these guys and get into the transition. Considering the last 24 hours, would you ever dream that you'd have a game like this from Brandon? Yeah, well, we know what Brandon is capable of doing. Tonight, he has his rhythm, and we're going to ride him. Thanks, Coach. Matt. In Portland, Marty Snyder with Nate McMillan. You are up three here. You wanted a more aggressive LaMarcus Aldridge. You've got it. Does he have an even bigger green light in the fourth, Coach? Well, we need to win this quarter. We've lost uh, both fourth quarters in the first two games. Uh, we need to continue to pressure these guys and get into the transition. Considering the last 24 hours, would you ever dream that you'd have a game like this from Brandon? Yeah, well, we know what Brandon is capable of doing. Tonight, he has his rhythm, and we're going to ride him. Thanks, Coach. Matt. I appreciate it. Marty, you take a look at the third quarter summary. And I tell you, the field goal percentage went down that third quarter. It became more of a grinded out type game. And, uh, you know, right now, what's happened in the first two games has become Dirk time. Yes. And Dirk has gone to the line and forced fouls. And we'll see what happens here up in Portland. Outscored 56 to 41 in the fourth quarters. Here's Perea. Knocked away, and it's going to be Dallas basketball. And Dirk Nowitzki in the fourth quarter averaging 16 points. And 19 of 21 combined from the free throw line in 13 to 13 in game one. Six seconds on the clock. Terry touched it, and it's going to be Portland basketball. That's the one thing you can do. You cannot turn that ball over if you're the Dallas Mavericks. You see Terry getting a little mixed up with the tomb over there. And some fans right there. And technical. The technical is going to be called. Yeah, you see, went off Jason's hand. And then you're going to see here they get a little tangled up and he just kind of pulls yep. them a little bit and and Jason Phillips says technical foul. Wow, that wasn't much of a technical foul. And Fernandez misses it. That's because it wasn't much of a technical foul. There's justice, <laughs> I'm telling you. As Rashid Wallace used to scream all the time, ball don't lie. <laughs> right there's a ball don't lie. <laughs> you broke out the ball don't lie. I threw ball don't lie at you, and it doesn't. He said that a few times here in Portland. <laughs> Many times. Chris Johnson, Fernandez, here's Wallace. He hasn't scored tonight. Wallace banks it in. First of all, a great catch by Wallace and kind of a wild pass, and then a powerful move to use the backboard there and just overpower the, the, the Blazers for or, uh, Dallas for two points. Five-point advantage, 11-3 run. Marion, push shot. No, gets it back. Three-point game. Roy. With Johnson, Wallace, Fernandez, and Batum. Batum driving on Stoyakovic. Spinning. Connects. Nice move by Nicholas Batum. Very nice move. Little spin got in there, and all of a sudden, all the bench is starting to wake up a little. Batum's got four points, and... Uh, you know, Brandon Roy, of course, leading him with 16. Fernandez on Nowitzki. Shot clock at four. Nice activity there by Chris Johnson. He got a hand up, got the rebound, but I tell you, he's really bringing in activity for Portland. 
The tomb, the three. Largest lead. 16-5 run, Kevin. We said the bench is starting to get into it, but two made a nice little move, and he rises up and takes a three, knocks it over, pretty solid defense. Blazers are on a little run right now, Matty. What a first week of the postseason in the NBA. So many great games. You got great matchups, individual matchup, team matchups. It's been a wonderful, wonderful start to the 2011 playoffs. Nowitzki over his last five. No field goals in the last 13 plus minutes for Nowitzki. Terry on Roy. Terry knocks it away, and you can just tell Roy playing with a bundle of confidence. Nate McMillan's huddle moments ago. Hey, keep rebounding and running. All right, rebound. We got to rebound first. No leak out. Yeah, getting the rebound is the key. That ends up that that's how you end your defense. And if they can get rebounds and get out and running. They're, they're, they feel comfortable as Brandon Roy rises up and missed shot, rebound by Nowitzki. But yeah, that's what they feel more comfortable, Matt, getting out and trying to put some pace in the game. Here's Terry. Shot doesn't go. They don't get a rebound there. Chandler back on the floor. And Chandler, 14 minutes, four fouls, has it knocked away. It's been a major factor in this game, not having Chandler down low operating in the paint. Roy on a crossover, has Berea on him. Wallace, a three, good! Timeout, Dallas, big bucket, Wallace! Take a look at the Mavericks defense in last consecutive playoff games holding opponents under 90 points. Goes back to 2006. First two games they held the Blazers held Dallas, uh, were held under 90 in both of those games. Right now they have 85. That was their average in the first two games. Here's the matchup that Dirk likes. He's just going to try to bowl him over. Swatted away. Chris Johnson now running the floor. Blocking foul. Getting great minutes out of Chris Johnson, rookie from LSU, 6'11", about 210, maybe. Very slight of build, but a great block shot there. And uh, pretty amazing. You know, you, you think about Nate McMillan, who's a tremendous coach, hasn't used the guy yet in this series. Throws him out there in a pressure-packed game where you've got to win. And Matt, you talked about the difference between 2-1 and one and 3-0 and oh is night and day in the NBA in the seven-game series. And great job. Wallace has seven all in this quarter. Chris Johnson. First season in the NBA, 25 years of age. Out of LSU, J.J. Perea over the outstretched arms of Chris Johnson. 
Here's Terry. Quiets the crowd. Great hustle there by Tyson Chandler to track that offensive rebound down and throw it out to the jet out in the corner for that three. Terry comes up big defensively. Chandler to Nowitzki. Nowitzki still struggling with his shot. Chandler just picked up number six. Oh, really hurts Dallas. He's their best defender. He just came up with a big offensive rebound and a pitch out to Jason Terry. And a very frustrating night for Tyson Chandler. Matt hasn't been able to stay on the floor. Got six fouls in, in, in 16 minutes and just was never able to get a rhythm. Nowitzki with the rebound. Here's Terry. Terry with 29. Top score for Dallas. Nowitzki finally gets one. He had missed his last seven shots. 87-79. Portland with 6.56 to go. Can they hold on and get one? Six remaining here at the Rose Garden. Portland, 87. Dallas, 79. Kidd with Terry. Haywood, Nowitzki, and Berea. Aldridge, Roy, and a turnover. Camby, Matthews, and Wallace, and a turnover there. Yeah, trying to post up a little J.J. Bray. He had none of it. He kept fighting him, and uh, Aldridge made a bad pass to Brandon Roy. Portland has outscored Dallas here in the fourth, 12 to 7. Nowitzki fading over LaMarcus Aldridge. What a tough shot. Aldridge getting all seven foot of himself up there, challenging. Dirk just fades away, does the one legged little step back floater. Dallas on a 7 0 run now. Roy with 16. Has Berea on him, bringing him in the post. Shot doesn't go, can't be right there. Kid wanted over the back. He sure did. Kid had a body on him, and uh, Camby climbed over the top of him, and Kid thought he had a, a foul on Camby. Camby, 6.6 .6 rebounds. Wallace out top on Kid. Berea in the lane. And foul. Here you got the post up there by Brandon Roy, misses it, and then Kidd is in there boxing him out, and he goes over the top, and Jay Kidd is saying, I boxed him out. Camby said, nah, I went over the top of him. <laughs> Probably not a foul looking on the replay. A little discrepancy as to whether J.J. Bray was shooting or whether it's side out. Derek Stafford, Eric Lewis, Jason Phillips. We'll give it to Berea to shoot free throws. What a bench performance by Dallas, led by Terry, 29. Berea has two. TNT this June, fear the skies. Face the enemy, fight for survival from TNT. And DreamWorks Television, Falling Skies series premiere this June on TNT. Portland's fighting for survival right yes. now, Matt. They've got to get this game. We talked about it earlier. The difference between 2-1 and 3-0 is monumental. Miller. Here's Aldridge. Haywood on him. Aldridge goes in. And foul. 
Good hard take on yeah. Haywood. Yeah, that's a good hard take there, and that's what Nate McMillan was talking about having on Lamarcus put the ball on the floor a little harder, attack, get in there, get to the free throw line, and you know pull a dirt Nowitzki, get to the free throw line in the fourth quarter. You always don't have to make shots, Matt. You can win the game from the line, you know, and that's one thing that uh, you know, Lamarcus will get better at as he gets a little bit older, a little bit more mature. His first free throw attempt of the night is good. And one quick thing, you saw where they took Brandon Roy out, they, they, Brandon Roy out, excuse me. They brought in Matthews, who has 25 points right now. They're going to close with this with this team, and as well as Brandon played, I think that he has confidence that they're going to go to LaMarcus, spread the floor, and if they double-team him, Matthews will make the three. Roy, 21 minutes, 16 points, 6 and 9 shooting. Wallace is on the ball, 91-82. Portland fighting for survival. Game three. Kid to Terry. Here's Nowitzki. Loses it. And a foul. This is what Dirk's done. Put a lot of pressure on them. Get that ball in the paint. Put a lot of pressure on the officials to make a call. And Caught Wes Matthews with his hand in the cookie jar trying to get him low before Dirk went up with it. Dirk has lived at the line in the fourth. 19 to 21. And then you see the numbers game one, game two. Getting both there from the free throw line. Nowitzki with 22 points. He's the Dallas Mavericks closer, and now you're going to see the ball end up in Lamarcus Aldridge's hand, and they're going to ask him, ask him to close for the Portland Trailblazers. Seven-point lead for Portland. Miller backing down on Perea, shoots over top, hangs on the rim. Can be last touch by Dallas. Portland ball. Marcus can be doing a nice job in that offensive glass, Matt, keeping the ball alive and giving uh, Portland a second opportunity here. Portland, and you mentioned this at the top of the show about scoring over 90. They're at 91, and there's a foul. So for the first time in this series, they've hit 90 at 91, and, and a foul. It's on Berea, his fourth. Matthews. Aldrich. Quick trigger. Shot doesn't go. Nowitzki gets it back to Kidd. Wallace now battling with Nowitzki. And it's going to be the fourth on Gerald Wallace. And they were getting all tied up, Kevin. <laughs> they sure were. Dirk was trying to get back to the post. You see a switch here. Now they're trying to get him down there, and Gerald just won't let him get post position. Held him, held him, grabbed him, and they finally called the foul. Haywood underneath, and Miller fouls him. For expert analysis, live press conferences after every game, playoff playbacks, and more, tune in to NBA TV for complete playoff coverage. And remember, Monday on NBA TV at 8.30 Eastern, Portland at Dallas, game five if necessary on NBA TV on a Monday. And what a game three tonight. Great wood. Yeah, great foul there by Miller coming in over the top and, and not giving Haywood a dunk. Make him learn it from the line. As you said, Matt, shooting a really low percentage. 36. Yep. During the regular season. Kid in a turnover. Perea. And a foul. And 
Dallas attacking. They're going to get back to the free throw line. And the fifth team foul. Tell you what, Jay Kidd has got hands like steel, steel vices. I mean, he gets everything that comes to him. Look at Berea just trying to get in there, get his body on someone, and get to the line. And Jay Kidd's got great hands. I think of all the attributes he has, Matt. He's got great vision and he's always had great hands. That's why he's got so many steals and he makes so many things, so many things happen. Making it happen there. You see the bench productivity for Dallas and Berea misses a second. Six point game. Dallas lost both of their regular season games here. Miller sneaky move. Sneaky quick. Yeah, he used the screen and roll, went off one side, came back, used it again, used it a third time, beat him off the dribble and got a layup. Portland ball. Aldridge throws it off the Haywood. Great hustle. Big, good defense right here. You're going to see the big fella move his feet. Stays in there, gets the ball, and throws it right off for of Brendan Haywood, and great play, right off the mush, right off, throw it right off his face there. Haywood with a block. Terry now to Berea. Berea driving. How about JJ Berea? No, oh, would not be stopped. Came down, little hesitation move, took it right to the rack, and got himself a layup. Portland's turned it over 10 times. Aldrich. Timeout, Dallas. Aldrich has 20, Kev. And they're closing the game with a little pick and roll between Aldrich and Andre Miller. And Dirk Nowitzki. Will he come alive with 2.20 to go in the fourth? This is where we need stops, guys. Thank you. Saturday, we'll be here in Portland, game four. ESPN with the Spurs and Grizzlies and Thunder and Nuggets, and it all starts with Chicago and Indiana, Chicago. In a closeout game. Terry's shot doesn't go. Wallace with a rebound. Wallace with 11 boards. And this is where Andre Miller's great at closing out games. So take his time, Matt. He's not going to rush anything. You have the lead. He's going to get probably into a little pick and roll game with Marcus Aldridge and just milk that clock down and take a shot late in the clock. Clock at five. Camby. Under 130 now remaining in game three. Here's Nowitzki. And he gets fouled by Aldridge. That's his third. And Nowitzki will head to the free throw line. 22 points. And that doesn't go. How about Dirk Nowitzki? Three or six kicks in the free throw line. Yeah, how about the Dallas Mavericks overall? That's like their fourth or fifth free throw miss in the fourth quarter. And that's their fifth miss free throw in the fourth quarter. And you can't do that. And you're trying to close out a game. Roy back on the floor. Levitsky with seven points here in the fourth. Again, Matt, you'll see Miller just hold it. So very, very late into the shot clock. And right now it looks like uh, Dallas has gotten to like a little bit of a 2-3 zone just trying to stop that pick and roll game. In the hands of Aldrich, double comes now. Roy, the three, shot doesn't go. 
Under a minute now left here in game three in Portland. Portland by seven. Nowitzki with Roy on him. Banks it in. Two possession game timeout Portland. Good timeout by Nate there. Gets upset on the offensive end, but these Dallas Mavericks aren't going away. They got a closer in Dirk Nowitzki. In the fourth quarter, tied or trailing. Can Dallas do it here tonight? Down two possessions with 42.8 to go. Yeah, they're going to need a little bit of help here by uh, Portland if they're going to get this game. I, they're going to need uh, some good, solid defense. And I, I just, I just thought they're going to. Andre Miller will, will again, will, will work this clock all the way down, Matt, until it's right at the last before they take a shot. And now then Dallas is going to have to sprint that ball up and call timeout. And they, get, they need two scores here in, in the next 42.8. Blazers led by three after three. Up five. Matthews. Matthews, so good early. Shot doesn't go. Kid sprinting ahead. 18. 15. It's a two, and it's good. He had the right foot on the line. Jason Phillips heads over with a word with Derek Stafford and Eric Lewis. Yeah, he comes up. He's looking to pass the entire time. And he finds out he's wide open and he rises up and makes a, either a really a long, long two or maybe a three. Let's see here. Ooh, close. You Boy, see the initial. Really close. Jason Phillips went up with the three and then he pointed down and said a two. He initially went up and you see right there his left arm going down saying a two. And right now that play is under review. Dallas on an 18-8 run in the last seven minutes, and that could be huge. Ooh, we just so, had an angle there. Yeah. Let's see. Boy, that's hard to tell. I mean, if he's towing the line, he's towing it by a <laughs> an eighth of an, and yeah, an eighth of an inch or or less. But I think the call, unless there's really evidence, Matt, that can overrule this, the call on the floor will stand. They have to have clear evidence that he was behind, but boy, I tell you what, that is awful hard to tell. Ruling on the floor stands. Ruling on the floor stands. And it is a two, and you see the reaction of Rick Carlisle. And what we talked about earlier, Matt, that you know, right now Dallas is going to have to have a little bit of help from, as they call another 20-second timeout here, uh, Portland Trailblazers do. Dallas is going to have to have a little bit of help here in, in this in this situation. Boy, I tell you what, that, Ooh, that one looks a little so different, doesn't it? Yep. That one might be the best view we've had. Ooh, Ooh, I tell you what. There's air between there. I tell you, there's a little bit of a little bit of light-colored tan wood between his toe and that. Uh, yeah. I don't know. That 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 to me does look looks behind, doesn't it? It does. Well, it, it's a two nonetheless, but here's what's going to have to happen. They got to fall right away. And as I said earlier, Portland's going to have to help them by missing some free throws right here, Matt. You know what I mean? If, if Portland just takes care of the ball, makes their free throws, they should be able to walk this, this game home. You see the game reset. Each team with a timeout remaining. And Brandon Roy now uses up their final timeout. They had a 20 second timeout. Neither team with a foul to give Dallas with one full remaining. 95 92, a three point thriller here in Portland with 12.9 remaining here in the fourth. And then the potential three. 
Initially called three, then changed to a two after the review. The play stands with a two. Yeah, now Portland's out of timeouts, and so again, great defensive pressure here by Dallas. Deny everybody, put a lot of pressure on the ball. If you're Dirk Nowitzki, who's going to be on the ball, be big, give them no angles, and ideally, right now, Matt, the best of all worlds, of course, if, if you're Dallas, is get a steal. If not, you got to foul immediately, and hope again, like I said, you get a little help from Portland. They miss a, couple, miss a free throw or two. Portland with no timeouts left. Aldridge quickly now to Miller. And Miller is fouled by Kidd. 9.6 remaining in the fourth. And this is the look that the officials look. That's the one I think they made it a bit different, doesn't it, Matt? It does. It looks like there's a little, little, uh, little error between that right toe and that paint. Miller. Back to a two possession game with 9.6 remaining in game three. And Andre Miller's had a solid game all night long. He's at 15 points right now. He has seven assists and he's cool at that line, Matt. He's, he's a good closer. I, I really like him. Uh, he and Jay Kidd are both really good closers for their team. Gets both. 97-92. The final timeout for Dallas. Five-point game. Portland looking for game three. Coach Carlisle will, will set up a three-point play here. Matt, try to get it right now because, you know, at two, you're down five. You got to foul again, and if they make one free throw, I think right now you go for it. You, you get your best out of bounds play. You try to free up a great three point shooter, either Terry or Nowitzki or Peja Stojakovic. Jay Kidd just, hey, just made one. So if you try to get a three right now, quick foul, and hope that they help you out again and they miss a free throw. No fouls remaining. They'll go to the line. No timeouts left for either team. Yep. Here's Kidd, the three. Portland ball. That's gonna do it. Portland takes game three. 97-92. Dallas leads a series two games to one. Trailblazers have only come back once to win a seven-game series, down 0-2, and won the next four games, 1977, the when they the won it all. Yeah, the year of the championship, they did that against the Philadelphia 76ers. Let's send it over to Marty Snyder. Marty? Early on, it was Wesley Matthews, and we'll chat with him first. 22 in the first half for you. When was the last time you had a half like that? Uh, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while, I'd say, probably at Minnesota or maybe a game here against Philly. What did you guys do differently tonight to ignite yourselves in the fourth quarter? We just played with heart. You know, it's not about X's and O's at this point. It's all about who wants some more, and they had us down 2-0. They took care of their home, so we got to take care of ours. Thank you very much, Wesley. This guy has been the story as of uh, the last few days. Brandon Roy, after you left game two, describe what you've gone through emotionally in the last 48 hours. Uh, it was tough for me. You know, uh, we were leaving Dallas and we were down 2-0, uh, and um, I didn't feel like I was a part of the series. And, uh, you know, I was a little emotional after game two and um, uh, showed some frustration. But uh, the biggest thing is we're trying to make something positive out of it. You know, and I got a chance to come out and play, and I want to do the best I can to help this team win. It might not have been until you hit the first shot, but when did you know you might have a night like this? I feel good all day. You know, um, I got a lot of, lot of support, especially here in Portland. A lot of people called. A lot of people just said, keep your head up. You know, I got to say thanks to Chuck. He, uh, he texted me and said, keep my head up and stay positive. And that means a lot for me. I'm a guy who uh, feeds all fans, and um, I feel good today, and I just want to come out and help the team. Now can you back it up in game four? 
Yeah, that's the goal, you know, is to build. And uh, like I said, Dallas took care of their, their court, and now we got to do the best that we can to take care of ours. Big night from Brandon Roy, Matt. 16 points, the Blazers win. Marty, he's a part of it now, and that is for sure. It is two games to one. Dallas still with the advantage. Game four on Saturday back here, Kevin, at the Rose Garden. Well, again, I, we talked about the importance of this game. How about the importance between 3-1 or 2-2? Two, two? So this next game is huge here in the Rose Garden. You know, Dallas Mavericks are going to have to find some scoring out of a few different people, but a great performance by Portland tonight. And a lot of guys chipped in here. Absolutely. Blazers take it, 97-92. You've been watching the NBA playoffs on TNT, exclusive home of the 2011 Eastern Conference Finals. Let's go to EJ in Atlanta.